All right, as you can see, I have two slides. <laughs> So hopefully you guys, all right. <laughs> okay, so hi, I'm Julia. Um, I am a software engineer, and I am the team lead for the data analysis team at SOSTA. Um, most of the things I'm gonna show you are demos. This is only a 10 minute talk, so I really don't have that much time to explain a lot of things. I'm gonna skim over a lot of things, um, but hopefully you get the right idea at the end of this talk. So. The talk is gonna be in three sections. The first part is I'm gonna give you a really, really brief um, outline of the tools that we're using, and then I'm gonna show you a bunch of stuff that we're using uh, with IPython and Julia, um, and at the end, if there's, there's some time, hopefully there'll be time for questions. Okay, so first off, uh, I really wanna talk about first um, this tool that we have, this is not done in Julia, <laughs> um, but this is the tool that we use to gather our data. It's called Mpulse. Um, it's a real user monitoring tool. That's why the rum, and unfortunately not the thing that you drink with pirates. Uh, and uh, the way that we gather data at SOSTA is we, in real time, we're gathering user experiences um, from web app applications from our clients. And if you look at the globe, there's these little lights blinking and they're called beacons. Um, and the beacon is where we capture the user experience and the demographic experience. Um, and those beacons then, we store that data and we use our tool to really start analyzing it. Um, and in the time that Mpulse has been launched, it's been two years, we've gathered um, from, from our top clients, we gathered as much as 10 billion beacons. Um, and uh, in general, probably by uh, ne end of this year or next year, we're going to be probably in the trillions of beacons of data that we gathered. So after gathering all that data, we really need to start analyzing it. We can't just keep it it's completely useless if we don't analyze it. Um, and that's going to bring us to the real thing that you guys are all here for, which is our data science workbench. So um, before I go into that, just want to give you guys kind of an idea of what is inside of a beacon. Um, what you're looking at right now is all in IPython. Um, so when I talk about demographics, I'm talking about geolocations, um, ISPs. Um, there's a lot of fields uh, in a beacon that is possible. We also have load times. Um, and some of these things are very specific to the client, they define some of these things. Some of it is by default. And um, I'm sure you're familiar with notebooks and uh, folders. Um, okay. So um, I'm going to start showing you notebooks, but unfortunately, because the time restraint, I'm not really going to have that much time to explain what all the tables are doing. What I really want you to take away from this is um, we kind of really married together Julia and D3. We want it because everybody here are analyzing data with Julia. Um, you know, you all understand that graphs is really the best way to show big data. It's intuitive. Um, it's a lot easier for people to find patterns. Um, and we're hoping that with D3, you know, we can give a more polished look and um, be able to do a lot more with the graphs. So. Here, we'll see that, oh, this is a little bit, here you can see that you can mouse over and highlight different graphs. You can make them um, be isolated. I'm going to show you several different ones. So this is a sunburst chart, and I also have to lower this. Um, you can mouse over it and see different paths that people used. Um, probably not as clear here, but hopefully you can. Um, more graphs with bar charts. So really want you guys to see like it's super responsive. It's completely possible. Um, this is one of my favorites. Does anyone know what this chart is called? 
donuts, yes. <laughs> Super delicious. Um, okay, so this one I'm actually gonna execute. Um, and this is really just want you guys to see that, you know, data, of course, doesn't always load all at once. There might be a lot coming in. So we try to, like, have it come out in chunks. Um, eventually, hopefully, with the network. <laughs> it will. <laughs> oh, darn it. Well, then I guess we'll just all look at this executing thing that goes on forever. I, I think we can have some questions while it's running and maybe it'll come back. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at this um, scientific workbench, uh, or at least data science workbench. Yes. Um, it, so if you're, you're putting graphs into the IPython notebook, or, or the Jupyter notebook, rather. Is that the, the primary you know, emphasis of what this does? or? Um, the primary emphasis is that we've gathered all this data, billions of data, um, and um, a lot of our clients have questions about what their data is doing. So they really want to analyze it. They have questions like, um, what is the slowest page for our users? If I try to enhance the performance for that page, will I see results from that? Is it something that will help with people actually buying things from my site? So. Um, those are questions that they have. Those are just like the general basic questions because this is all really new to them. It's a new tool. Um, we're hoping to really help them find more questions, more interesting questions to ask. Um, and, you know, once they have those questions, then of course we're going to use Julia to really do the analysis. We're going to pull that data. We put that data into Redshift. Um, and then. Are you pulling from Redshift right now? Yeah, okay. exactly. And then um, Julia connects with Redshift and then um, do analysis on it, maybe um, with different math statistics, equations, um, functions that we have created. Uh, and then after that is done, after that is done, then we um, display it as graphs, depending on whether or not the user wants to see them as graphs. So, um, elephants are also really great. <laughs> Um, does that answer your question? I think so, yeah. I'm just, I was just trying to get my head wrapped around what the data science workbench is. Is it about the data flooding to Redshift? Is it about the presentation of the data? It's definitely, so it's definitely a combination of everything where um, the data science workbench is there for people to ask questions about their data. And then what we do is that we try to use Julia to answer those questions, and then we use Julia with D3 to really show that in a graphical manner so that it's easy to digest. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. More questions? The graphing pieces, um, right now, yeah, but um, as you can see, like there's some of the stuff for IPython is um, we're probably going to release it in the future, so you know, follow us on Twitter, <laughs> I guess. Um, and so this is like our dark theme where um, we have, as you can see, it, we actually have a better version of it now. But this is the one that I have on the server right now. And we also have um, a white theme as well here. Um, it's not as clear, it's not that clear from the projector, but. Um, what, was there a generation before this where you were using like Gatfly or something else? That's no, we always used IPython with um, Julia. And we're, we're going to move to Jupyter, but as you can see, we've done a lot of work with IPython, and it's going to be some work for us to shift over to Jupyter, but we're, it's on the roadmap for that. So we, we had a really cool graph to show you guys, but unfortunately, 
Um, if we have it, we can take a look at it tomorrow in the tutorials. <laughs> Yeah, like we had a really cool, like two really cool graphs to show you, but unfortunately, um, it's going to execute forever. So, <laughs> let's thank the speaker.